Hi, this is Brian Lai from Malaysia. I'm a lecturer from The One Academy. In this video, I'm going to import every textures we have done from Substance Painter. Here I have my book scene open in Substance Painter. We are going to start exporting. Go to Export Texture under File or Hotkey Ctrl Shift E. First go to Output Template and duplicate Vray Next Metallic Roughness Preset and rename it to Vray Next Metallic Roughness Custom. We are removing anisotropy levels, anisotropy angles, transmissive, emissive, and height. Leave only base color, roughness, metallic, and normal. Add a gray channel and drag opacity into it. In the drop down menu, select the gray channel. Copy normal's naming and paste it into the grayscale channel and change the words normal to opacity. Go back to setting and set output template to the V-Ray Next Metallic Roughness Custom. Go to the default material and make sure it is 5 channels in total. We are going to uncheck opacity for this export because there is no transparent object in the scene. Go back to global setting and set the output directory to our project files. Open a folder and name it Bulk. Hit select folder and begin to export. It is going to take a few seconds. Done. Save the project. Now we go to the next object, coffee and candle. We don't need to set up the template anymore. First, set up the output directory to a folder named coffee and candle, then change the template to the same custom preset. This time we are going to need all five including the opacity because there is glass in the scene. Hit export. Save the project and proceed to the next one. Now we open up fabrics. Set output directory to a new folder named fabrics output template to the new same custom preset. Uncheck everything in default material except normal map. We are also going to uncheck 1003 in the UV task because there is no normal map applied for the sweater. Now hit export, save the project and proceed. Next we open plants and water part. Set the directory to new folder plants and water part. Template to the same custom preset. We need all channel in this one, simply hit export. Save the project and proceed to the next one. Now waffle on plate. Set the directory to a new folder and name it the same. Same template. Uncheck opacity and go export. Save the project and proceed. Last one, wooden tray. Set the directory and template. Uncheck opacity and export. Save the project. Now look into our project files. We have a list of folder and we are going in to check each of them. In the wooden tray folder, we can delete metallic since there is nothing in there. In the waffle on plate folder, we are not deleting the metallic because there is information in there. We are going to leave 1002 even though it is completely black. Fabric folder is fine. For coffee and candle, we are deleting metallic since it is blank for both 1001 and 1002. In this case, we can delete them. For the book, we are deleting the metallic as well. Now the texture map is clean enough. We can go back to Maya and put them in. In Maya, open up Hypershade besides the Render Setting button. Hit Tab and type in Rewear Material to create a new gray general material. Rename it to Book SHD. SHD stands for Shader. Now hit the Tab again and create a file node. Import Base Color into it. Create another two file nodes. Import Normal and Roughness into each one. Now we can simply middle mouse click to drag our first file node color map into the diffuse slot. It will automatically connect the out color to diffuse. We are going to set every shader's reflection color to full white and check roughness. Now we can drag roughness into the slot, but this time, if you see carefully, Hypershade connects the alpha instead of out color. This is because roughness can only read one channel at a time. Our texture contains four channels, red, green, blue, and alpha. By default, the system is going to connect alpha when there's only one channel output. We are going to fix it manually by overwriting any channel under the out color to the reflection roughness slot. I usually use the red channel. Bear in mind, it doesn't matter which one you pick. Three of them share the same value. Some tips here. You can combine your opacity, roughness, metallic, and bumps into one single TIFF file since they are all single channel map. They can be stored under RGBA channel separately. If you don't understand what I'm saying, you may stick to this simple workflow here. Now set the metallic to zero since we deleted the map. Reflections remains black. And last, set the bump map type to normal map in tangent space. Drag the normal file node into the map slot. Now we are going to set normal map's color space to raw as well as roughness map. The color map remains sRGB. If there's any metallic map, kindly set that to raw as well. 
Now we can rename this page to books. Open a new page, create a new V-Ray material and name it coffee and candle. Now we can speed things up a little by creating four file notes straight since we knew there are four channels in this one. Then set UV tiling mode to Udom Mari to all. Because we are using Udom workflow for this particular object. I always sort it like this, color, roughness, metallic, opacity and normal. Now we are going to set raw color space for roughness and normal. sRGB for color and opacity. Now we can put them into the slot accordingly. Remember to set reflection color to white and check use roughness. Metallic to zero if there is no texture input. For opacity textures, we are going to check the invert under effects. This is very important because refraction needs the inverted color from the opacity map. Your model will not be transparent if you skip this step. And now we can drag opacity texture into the refraction slot. Set IOR to 1.517 to match the scientific value of glass. And last one, the normal map. Name the page coffee and candle and we can proceed to the next one. Create a new page and name it fabrics and create a new material. For this one, it's going to be the simplest setup. Create a file and import the normal map. Be sure to set to UDEM and color space to raw. Put it into the bump slot and we are not going to tweak any other setting at this point. We are doing it later. Now proceed to plant and water pots. This time we need all five channels. Create a new material and five file notes. First thing, set UDEM for all, then load textures and set color space correspond to the channel. Again, sRGB only for color and opacity. The rest are all raw. Now we can connect color, roughness, metallic, opacity, refraction with inverted check, IOR to 1.517 and last one, normal map. Now we can proceed to Waffle on Play, create a new page, new material and 4 file notes. I'm going to speed up from here since the explanation was made clear. Then the last wooden plate would be the same setup except UDEM. Now I'm going through all my shader networks to check things like if use roughness is checked and also reflection color is set to white. Bomb map type set to normal map in tangent space, except for fabric, that would be a different setup. Okay, now we are going to apply each shader to its object. Fabric to fabrics, coffee to coffee, book to book, and so on. And now we can hit IPR to preview them. They all look red except for things like fabric, water in the part, and mini light bulbs. Now we are going to finalize each of them. First go to Hypershade, Plants and Water page, create another V-Ray material and name it Water, and apply it to the water geometry. We still have IPR ongoing so that we can see the changes on the spot. Set the color to black, reflection and refraction to white, IOR to 1.333. Now proceed to fabric. We set the shader color to some dark blue, then go to edit and duplicate special, check geometry type to copy, and check duplicate input connection. Here I picked the wrong one, but it's okay, I can connect them manually. Now we have two same shaders, and set one of them to white and apply it to the pillow. I'm going to delete the same normal map nodes, instead both of them should share the same normal map node. You can avoid doing this if you pick the duplicate input connection correctly. I'm going to make it slightly yellow instead of a fully white color so that it looks so that it looks dirtier. The rendering is now getting much slower and expensive because we have added many texture maps. So we can set the rendering resolution to 50% to help speed up the preview. 
Now I'm making another shader under fabrics and name it cloth. Apply it to the sweater. Set color to pitch. Now the mini bulbs. Select all the bulbs and separate the glass part and the base itself. Clean up the outliner, deleting history and so on. Now create a new shader, name it wire, apply it to the wire geometry. Create another shader for the mini bulb glass and the body. Now we have three shaders. Setting the body itself to white color. For glass, set color to black, reflection and refraction to white, IOR to 1.517. For wires, I want to make it look transparent, so I'm setting the color to black, reflection and refraction to white. Refraction glossiness is set to 0.6. It looks too transparent now. So I decided to duplicate the wire and make a thinner wire in it. So now I have two geometry for the wire, outer and inner. Create a new shader for the inner wire and set black color with some reflections and render again. Now we can see a very nice layered wire. Instead of black, I'm changing it to gray to make it less contrast compared to the below. Well, for most things it looks right, but then the waffle looks so stiff. This is because there's no translucency in it. Light rays did not scatter inside the waffle. So instead of using V-Ray material, we can create another material called V-Ray AL surface. We are going to input the texture the same way, color to color, normal map to normal map, and be sure to set it to tangent space. Set SSS mix to 1, SSS mode to directional, and connect the color map to SSS 1 color. And set the radius to 4. Roughness map connect to reflection 1 roughness, reflection 1 distribution to GGX, and assign them to the waffle. You may not see big changes here, but if you look carefully, the self shadow on the geometry looks so much softer. You can tweak the SSS scale for a much accurate look. We are going to do the same thing for the plants and candle. Now I'm going to duplicate another shader just for the candle mount. This time I will go for duplicate input connection. Don't make the same mistake again. Rename the new duplicate shader candle mount shader. Apply it to the mesh and change the fog color to orange color. This will give us a colored glass. Now we are going to add displacement map to the sweater. Select the cloth geometry and right click the displacement icon in the V-Ray shelf. Click to apply the displacement node to it. Now you should be able to find displacement node in the attribute editor. Click the checker box and apply new file. Import a fabric pattern. Here I have prepared a fabric alpha. You can create it by yourself in Photoshop. Now we head into place 2D texture node and raise repeat UV. You can see the popping ups now. Go back to the displacement node and apply displacement control under the attribute menu. Now you can adjust the strength. To make it look even more convincing, we can drag our displacement file node in the fabric page, right beside cloth shader, and create a node called color composite. Set operation to multiply and connect our fabric pattern to color B and change color A to the same color as our cloth shader. Then connect our color to the cloth shader's color slot. Now our fabric color corresponds to the displacement. Deep is darker and the bump is brighter. We are going to set factor to a lower number so that it won't appear fully black. 0 0.55 seems to be a good number. Now we are adding lights to this mini light bulbs. The idea is simple. Create a sphere geometry and place it in every single bulb.
Select all the sphere and apply relay light mesh to it. Now we can do a quick render. As you can see, it emits light now. We are going to set the units to lumen and then go to the V-Ray frame buffer and enable bloom and glare effect. Now we can play with the parameters below to get creative in the bloom shape. To make it look even better, I changed my light mesh type to temperature and set the value to 5500, which matches most bob in the market. Now I think the sphere is too big, I select all of them and make it smaller. Now we are going to do a render. We can see how far we have gone from blocking to this. However, this is not complete yet. In the next video, we are going to discuss lighting improvement and look development. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the YouTube channel and stay tuned for new videos. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.